Come on, put your hands together and give Jesus some beautiful praise. If you have a voice, make some loud noise and I just hallelujah. Last time I came, this thing was there, right? Uh, I, I knew I, I'm normal. Something is not wrong. With me. I, I came in as okay, no, 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 no. This, this, praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for life. Can we celebrate the life of my friend and brother? Papi. <laughs> He's the youngest papi I know. <laughs> and let's, let's give our hands in praise to God on behalf of mommy. If there is papi, there must be, there must be mommy. Amen. <laughs> Can we tell mommy, shout, we love you. Yeah. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from the Director of Finances, Kitchen Affairs, and General Wellbeing of the Olali family. Her name is Bola. She sends her regards to you. Amen. I want you to pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost just for two minutes. Let God help you ask what he wants to do for you this morning. Could you just go ahead and just pray in the Holy Spirit for a minute? Just pray in the Holy Spirit for a minute. Come on, pray out loud on the Holy Ghost. Pelela cose mondre te prasi presta rasa. Father to child, spirit to spirit. Lighted by your word With the bread of life That's how I come alive That's how I change my world Father to child sing, sing Father to child Spirit to spirit Lighted by a word, by a word. With, the bread of life. With, With the bread of life With the bread of life That's how I come alive That's how I change my world That's how I change my world Lift your hands and sing it as a prayer Come breathe, oh God Come breathe Upon me, breathe Father, thank you for hearing our cry and attending on to our prayers. Let every heart that is overwhelmed this morning 
be led to the rock that is higher than every one of us receive glory and praise my king in jesus name we pray amen come on put your hands together and give jesus praise thank you hallelujah you may have your seat in his holy presence amen i want us to make a boast this morning it's uh there's something you have or someone you have that god does not have so we want to make a boast in the face of our god that we have something or someone that he doesn't have you have a father god does not have one <laughs> you have a father but god has no father amen can we can we we're not trying to slight if we just want to let lord we have something you don't have or we have someone you don't have we have a heavenly father and you don't have any father hallelujah come on stand up and give your father the loudest praise you can muster hallelujah amen in jesus name be seated very quickly open your bible with me fulfilling destiny mm. now i can't i can't um i don't have the grace papi has so i can't do this in one service if you want to fellowship with us in the second service you're welcome to stay behind and um enjoy the second part of this message so i'm going to divide it into two and we'll do the first part now and we'll bring it all together in the second service is that fine oh, don't worry i didn't i wasn't asking for your consent i just i've just been uh, hallelujah amen matthew and chapter number four fulfilling destiny matthew four i will need you to be very focused this morning um god wants us to understand some things the key to um getting the best of what god will have for us this morning is understanding so for you to understand i need you to pay attention all right please go through every scripture along with us as we read matthew and chapter 4 i'll read verse 18 to verse 20 matthew 4 18 to 20. the bible says and jesus walked by the sea of galilee saw two brothers simon called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen yeah keep going verse 19 and he said to them follow me and i will make you fishers of men can we read verse 19 together please everyone i said to them follow me and i will now please let's stay here we might not bother reading verse 20 can we read this one more time please one more time read and he said to them now please take note of scripture the instruction is this you follow me and who will do the making in other words you can't make yourself and i'll tell you several reasons why you can't make yourself several reasons you can't be who you ought to be it's not possible there are no 16 principles to this thing there's just one now to lay a foundation i'm going to say a few things number one is the fact that your purpose which is the reason for your existence was not written by you or determined by you there are some things that are predetermined in god it is not subject to your will your 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 ability to choose does not come to play in those things they are determined it, it will happen irrespective of what you do okay number one of it is your purpose what god created you for now please god you, god did not step you into earth or into existence then thought about what you would do mm -mm. he wrote what you do you're a blueprint first of all he existed as a blueprint the blueprint is what you are to achieve for god and humanity on the earth written now everything about you was now molded to conform to what is written 
In other words, you are who you are because of your purpose. Your family, the family you are born into, is also part of that predetermined will of God. In other words, none of us, I don't know about you, if God gave me an opportunity to have chosen the family I'll be born into, who wouldn't want to be born by the queen? I'll get paid for doing what she tells me to do. Very easy life. Your birthday is known all over the world, yet you don't walk. Do you understand what I'm saying? You don't have a choice, and that's why you must celebrate your parents. Your parents God's purpose for your life. In fact, let me explain to you. Your destiny needed an absentee father. <laughs> your destiny needed what? And a, an unloving mother. <laughs> Everything you found in your home that you are calling trauma is purpose. So if you don't understand this, you will, because God has now made you what he wants you to be to an extent, you begin to, well, feel you need to pay back some people who are not there for you when they ought to be there for you. It's called foolishness and a lack of understanding. Everybody, your destiny required, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, Obama's destiny required a man, a father that will be a donor that will never be present. Just come to Hawaii, deposit, and leave. That's what is destiny required. And brethren, everything that has, especially in the beginning of your life, when your own will was not yet activated, when I mean your will activated, you are not, you are not, you not gotten to an age where you decide things that will happen to you and how they will happen. Your life was still left at the mercy of other people's decision. Everything that happened at that time, ladies and gentlemen, is purpose. God's design. Have you two met some people that are from homes everybody's loving? Dad is ever present, wonderful dad, wonderful mom, all the siblings happy. Do you understand? You see such families and you wonder what have you done wrong? Oh no, you've not done anything wrong. What they have, what they have is what is needed for their purpose. What you have is what is required for your purpose. And you better give God some hand of praise for what he gave you for your purpose. So that auntie that messed you up, purpose. That uncle that was not there, purpose. That father that never took care of you for purpose. Guess what? Your stepmother that made sure you were a servant to your father's house, purpose. Somebody shout purpose. So it would be foolish of you not to take care of them. It would be foolish of you. If they didn't play their role, you won't be here. If they did not pay, pay their role, you will not be here. If your stepmother did not, did not finish your life with pain, make you cry every day, ladies and gentlemen, you won't be here. All that was to build character in you. Let me explain this a little bit. I told myself I was still online now. I must finish in time. Okay, I will explain that in second service. <laughs> no, no, no. I, must, I, I have to be disciplined today. Is a, a commitment I made to myself before showing up. All right? So all that is purpose. So please, for all the witches that made sure that you took jam five times, for all the, oh yes, for all the enchantment, you have to go to the village. The one that caused havoc in the family and make sure that your, dad, your father died young so that you have to fend for yourself. Let's give a praise to God for them. Come on, put your hands together and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, whether your mom was there for you or not, whether your dad ever paid school fees or not, you must take care of them. And one, it will not be one more than the other. <laughs> oh yeah, have you read the story of, of um, David? When they took their kids and their wives and bought their houses for Samuel 13, the Bible says the Amalekites came, ravaged them, went away. And the Bible says the men of David wanted to study. People were, they were ready to die. They were all in despair. Scripture records, ladies and gentlemen, when they went after the Amalekites, after he inquired from God, and God said, go after them. When they went after the Amalekites, the Bible says that when they got there, he, he asked the Lord, 
Lord, should we go ahead and cross the river? Is it, what's the name of the river? Bear or Beppo, I can't remember the name of the river now. Now, some people were already tired. They had fainted. They, were, they had cried their eyes out. They didn't have energy to go on. But some few were still strong enough. So David now said, the ones that were tired, just stay back. So this, those ones could not cross the river. So they didn't go to war. They did not follow them to um, restore what had been lost. A few that went, they came back with booty. And when it was time for them to divide the booty, David said, well, both those that went to war and those that didn't go, same portion. Christianity is not what you want. It's what God says it is. Same, same portion. So, if you are sending your mom that was there for you $10 every month, how much will your lost father who does not even recognize you as father, how much will he get? $10. Any other way is the way of the flesh. That brings me to the point today. So Jesus says, don't, you can't make things happen for yourself. Follow me and I will make you. I preached when I was younger, well, the principle of finding purpose, living in purpose, talked about your passion, and your pain, talked about your gifting, talked about the rewards, how to discover purpose. But at the end of the day, as I grow older in the Lord, I found that there's just one. One. Any other thing, we are trying to break down the one. <laughs> just one. Follow. Now, because you are not the author of your purpose, you cannot fully. Now, you are not the author of your purpose, one. Number two, your mind is not um, sufficient, as it were. The comprehension you can muster cannot be sufficient to know the entirety of your purpose, number two. Number three, so that doubt will not work in you yet, so that you will not be able to stop or withstand what is about to come, God cannot reveal to you everything at a time. What you can handle now, I mean you can testify of yourself. What you can handle now spiritually is different from what you could handle 10 years ago. Five years ago. Some things you look in the face now and you smile. 10 years ago, you tell you to die. You have matured. You are not where you were. So you can imagine if God told you, well, this is the person that is, the devil is using to be, to be um, a hand, an invisible hand of, of pain in your life. Those years back, that person must die. Now, you want that person to come to Jesus. I love leading witches to Christ. It gives me a kind of satisfaction. I'm telling you the truth. It's such a joy. You know when you go to the very, very depth of hell and pull someone out, it's only Jesus that can do it. And they serve Jesus with reckless abandonment. Because they know already they're already in hell. They were living in hell. And Jesus' love brought them out. In the name of Jesus, God will use you to bring somebody out of hell this week. So please understand the fact that number one, your purpose was not written by you. So you cannot decide what you want to do. <laughs> you know, you go to a hospital and there are different floors. Um, different floors, different departments. Um, someone needs to help me here. So you have the orthopedic for bones, and then you have the, what do you call the section for cancer? What do you, oncology. Then you have, doctors help me now. Then you have different, different departments and different floors. Now please, if, if, the, <laughs> if someone who has bone issues goes and says no, because my friends are in oncology and they are patients in oncology, oncology is where I want to be. Now, if they insist, oh, we'll give you a bed. So, all the medications that are being given to the patients, cancer patients, are administered to him. Number one, he will never be healed. He's in the wrong place. And that's what a lot of people do. You decide where you want to be. 
All Jesus says is this, follow me. And let me explain why he says follow me. You didn't write what you are supposed to do or who you are supposed to be. I wrote it. Hebrews chapter 10, it says, Lo, I come in the volume of the books as it is written of me. I have come to do your will, O God. There's a will of God. There's a path God has already ordained for your life. And all he says is just follow me. Just follow me. Now, let me explain a bit about the flesh. There's this guy in the book of Matthew 19. Matthew 19 from verse 16, the Bible says, And Jesus said to him, a rich young ruler, follow me he says lord i i have what do i need to do to have eternal life to be perfect jesus said well go and obey the laws jesus mentioned six he left four jesus go and check that scripture jesus only mentioned six laws and he left out four he left out the ones the guy was guilty of because jesus wanted him to validate himself so he went and says oh lord all these things you've mentioned i i've, I've been doing since i was young and Jesus says to him and says, well, if you want to be perfect, in other words, if you really want your life to be what God wants it to be, then go sell everything you have, follow me, period. Now, he tells me two things. Number one, this guy isn't where God created him to be. Though he has all the riches, he's comfortable, he's rich, he's young. This guy achieves major things from a very young age. But yet he wasn't there. And the Bible now says, Jesus said to him, go sell everything, follow me. Now at this time, ladies and gentlemen, prophecy and even general knowledge knew that one of the disciples of Jesus must betray him. His position must, will be declared vacant later. Jesus said, if you follow me and have treasure, he didn't say treasures, you will have treasure in heaven. Treasure that is given to the 12 apostles is the fact that they will sit on a seat in heaven. And they will judge the 12 tribes of Israel. The foundation of the new Jerusalem will be laid in their names. Only exclusive to the 12. So Jesus saw this guy and says, well, you've, before men, you seem to be doing well. Like the Laodicean church, you say you are rich. You say you lack nothing. You say everything your soul needs, you have. But that is you. That is what you think life is about. There is something I created you to do. There is a space I created you to fulfill. is still vacant. So Jesus says to this guy, what the problem is, is not the fact that you don't love me, but you are not following me. And so, go live out everything. Follow me. And the Bible says he went away sad. That young man died never fulfilling purpose. And before all of us, he was rich. Before all of us, he became a ruler at a young age. Rich, young ruler. As far as all of man is concerned, this guy was it. But brethren, before the Lord, with whom we have to do, and the Lord that we're going to face and live with forever and forever, he was a waste of resource. As far as God was concerned. What is flesh? Please, we're going to say some things, quick things from now. What is flesh? Now, let me first of all explain. The reason why this guy could not follow Jesus was because of flesh. The guy was not a sinner. Flesh is not sinning. Sinning is different from flesh. When man fell, please stay with me here. We're getting to some interesting places. When man fell, Man did not fall to become a sinner. Man fell and became flesh. Flesh is another word for carnal. Flesh is the problem God has, not sin. <laughs> I take that again. Flesh is the problem God has with mankind, not, not sin. Oh, no, 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 not sin. Not sin. So, so the devil comes to man and says, well, haven't God said you shouldn't eat of any tree of the garden? And the lady says, oh, no, 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 God didn't say so. God just says so, so, and so. And says, well, God knows that the day you eat of it, you will become like him, knowing good and evil. And the lady said, well, she saw it. 
Scripture says, she said in verse 6, chapter 3, Genesis. She said, she saw it that it was beautiful and a pleasant fruit, one that is desired to make one wise. Now, here is the bottom line, and that is flesh here. Flesh is having an identity that is exclusive of God. Flesh is what? That is exclusive of God. God's problem with man is not sin. In fact, there will be no sin if man did not become flesh. There will be no sin if man did not become flesh. Flesh is not your body. Oh, no, 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 no. Flesh is you wanting to have an identity that is exclusive of God. So what Satan says to man was this. It was a temptation. It wasn't a temptation to sin. It was a temptation to have an identity, step out of God and be an entity yourself. It doesn't mean you are not going to have relationship with God. Oh, no, 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 no. But there is God and there is God. So, you can exist without God. That is flesh. In fact, you know 1 Corinthians 4, 7? The Bible says, O thou man, what is it that thou have that you did not receive? Who has made it to differ from another? What is it that you have that you did not receive? What is flesh? Flesh is what you have and who you are that you did not receive. I take that again. Flesh is what you have and who you are whom you are rather, that you did not receive. In other words, anything you have achieved in life that God did not have to contribute anything to, you are flesh. You know those self-made self men? You know, I'm a self-made man. That's flesh talking. Flesh will give thanks to God, but not the glory. Flesh will say, Lord, thank you. But in their hearts, they know I worked hard. Oh, I did, oh, man, I did. Knowing my family, we are smart. I'm just too smart. But she won't say that in the testimony. <laughs> that is flesh. And I want you to notice that the moment they did what God says not to do, the Bible says the first thing that happened, verse 7, the Bible says, and their eyes opened, and what was the first thing they saw? Naked. Do you know what it means to be naked? It simply means that whatever your covering was, whatever covering you had before, had left. Rather than seeing the ability, see, the true nature of man outside of God uh, is empty. What makes us who we are, what will ever make us what we ought to be, is God. The moment we made a choice to step and become exclusive of God, all you will see is nakedness. That's why money will never give you the joy you need. A wife, a woman, a girlfriend, getting under a man or over a woman will not help you with this. Oh no, it is a void that only God, only God, only God can feel. But brethren, Jesus did not die for flesh. He didn't die against flesh. He died for sin. That leaves us another thing altogether. Jesus' death was to deal with sin. But don't forget the problem of man is not sin. What is it? Flesh. Because sin is simply a... Um, an evidence that flesh is ruling your life. Sin is simply what? An evidence that flesh... Now, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, the Bible says, God says, My spirit will no longer strive with man, for he is now flesh. Now, it simply means before then, he was not flesh. But the moment he chose to be exclusive of me, he has now become 
haven't you noticed that this was now when God now said, because he's now flesh, his days are going to be numbered. He's going to live for 120 years. Because he's now flesh. Before then, Adam, God's man's days were not to be counted. Man was meant to live and live and live and live as long as he's not flesh. The moment you become flesh, your days are numbered. Remember scripture? The Bible says, Isaiah 40, the flower faded, the grass withered. But the word of God, before then he said, all flesh is grass. And grass will fade. Grass will wither. The moment we became flesh, time stepped in. It says, from now on, every man's days will be 120 years. Are you with me? God's favorite right house. So your, your problem is, our problem is never seen. It is flesh. But you see, the truth is this. God will help you stand in a place where you can decide not to be flesh. Jesus is, oh Lord, take this down. Salvation does not give God control of your life. It only gives him ownership. Salvation does not give God control of your life. only gives him what? Ownership. So God does not have ownership control of your life because you are saved. Oh no. God does not have ownership control of your life because you are saved. He owns your life. He owns you the duty of care, but he's not responsible for your choices. And he's not in control. He is not in control. I hear a lot of few folks say God is in control. No, you are in control. Now, you being in control means there's a, there's a danger of flesh being in control. God, you, God, you might know, I mean, it might be clear to your heart and your spirit that, well, this sister should be my wife. But you know what? She doesn't have the features you want. Because you know, you created yourself, so you know what you want. And you know your future. That this person is carrying every, every assistance you are going to need for the troubles ahead of your life. And those troubles do not respond to prayers. They are determined by God to shape you so that you become, move from a boy to a man. Now, if you are now hooked up with someone who doesn't carry grace to help in such moment of need, don't forget she's a help mate. So she can't help you. Then marriage goes into crisis. And you're not blaming God. Excuse me, sir. You didn't ask him whether... But you knew she wasn't the right one. But you went ahead anyway. So when you have such problems, keep it to yourself. <laughs> Galatians 5. He says the spirit was after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit. He now says the works of the flesh are now made manifest. So sin is simply a, an evidence that flesh is in charge. So sin is not the problem. What's the problem? What is flesh? Having an identity exclusive of God. Do you know what flesh does? Flesh says I'm a PhD holder. I shouldn't be talking to people that just have a first degree. That, no, that's flesh. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. You know, some of us have traveled. We, we should, we're not doing the same class with those people that have not been around. We will meet Allah Muhammad Airport, you don't know. And because of you now, the one in Lekki, they refuse to build. <laughs> so that you're not being, he's been in an airport all your life. That's what? Flesh. Anything you have and any whatever you are that is exclusive of God is flesh. God has never had a problem. So when God, Jesus says, you know what? I'm going to need two people, please. Can I have two folks here? Brothers. Two brothers. Why do, 
Brothers don't like volunteering. Come. Let me have one more. That is not in dark suits. Yes. Thank you, my brother. Stay with me, church, please. Fulfilling destiny. Here is brought you fine. Now, because you're in... Okay, you stay here. You stay here, sir. You stay here. Now, you go to the very, very end of it. Can I have one more? Keyboard is come. Okay, keyboard is, you be playing. Another, uh, another keyboard is, <laughs> no, no, it doesn't matter. I was just kidding. Please come. Please listen and watch this. I told you Jesus did not die against flesh. He died for, I'm sure you are still finding that hard to grasp, right? He didn't die against flesh. That's why even after you are saved, you can still do wrong. You can still do wrong. You can still slap your wife. If you try it again and you're mine in this house, that hand will bring offering to God. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you can't. The day you got saved, anger did not leave you. You can still choose to be very angry and sin. You can still choose to go and sleep with another person, or someone that is not your wife or your husband. You can still choose to have a relationship with a married man. It doesn't mean you are not saved. You are still very born again. Very, very born again. <laughs> But you will never enjoy God. I'm going to explain some things to you before. Hold that thought, please. While my, my team is here. So here is this brother. What's your name, sir? Here is Ola, my namesake. Now, Ola, this is the beginning of Ola's life. Ola needs to, Ola's destiny is for him to move from here to where he is. You, you face us, sir. Face us. Yes, I love your boots. Now, Allah's job is to move from here. His whole destiny. This is the part of his destiny. God created him to move from Ihai to to Shem. So God wants him to move from no blazer to blazer. From shoe to boot. <laughs> to the glory of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. God will always move you from little to greater. It doesn't mean if I is not looking good. Hallelujah. But there are additions. I, do, I, I didn't do this consciously. You, you know, see, there are a lot of things that are not on Ephraim, that are on show. It's because God will, never, God will never call you to make you less. Never. So his destiny is to move from here. And go all the way there. Now, because he does not know where he's going, I've announced it now. He has heard me. Okay? So, but I, he didn't know where he was going. You know, I've announced it. You have heard me. I needed you to go along with that. So, she will move away. In fact, she will get out of the auditorium. <laughs> That's the easiest way. Disappear. This, 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 disappear. Uh, you can go on that. You are not moving fast enough. This is of destiny snow. <laughs> so here is Brawler. If you don't move faster, this brother. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. I'm going somewhere. So I will tell Show. Show has now been born. Now. Allah has now been born. Forgive me. Thank you. Allah has now been born. So I tell Allah, Allah, Allah starts living life. All right? And he gets saved. And because Allah is still fleshy, he's saved now, he's born again. But you see, God, that is me in this case. All right? Come on, put your hands together for the Almighty. <laughs> Not me, oh. <laughs> I'm representing him in this story. All right. Make it, don't kill me before my time. Right? <laughs> now, 
So he, we are in relationship. Salvation, what salvation does is brings God into your life. It doesn't bring your life into God. Your life being in God is a conscious decision you have to make and that's the only way you deal with flesh. I take that again. Salvation brings God into your life so that you can find your way into God's life. Thank you, my sister. You've gotten it. You think Papi can't have a career outside of this? Or you think, or you think all the testimonies you had is just by eating seven times, or 21 times a week? You sleep seven days a week? <laughs> oh no. Oh no. By the time you finish his, your fasting, he's starting his own. Or he has started before you started. What all that does is to get you into God's heart. Let me explain this before I get back to Sheol. If Being saved is a great thing. And that's necessarily what you need to make heaven. To as many as received him, to them gave he, to become, just receive Jesus. Now for your salvation, Jesus came looking for you. He stood at the door of your heart and he knocked. You opened, he came in. Came into your heart. So salvation brings Jesus into, into your heart. Now, he did that for one reason. So that you might also find, it becomes, it now opens a door and a channel so that you can find your way into his heart. So don't think because you are saved, everything that salvation brings, uh, everything that God has is yours. Yes, it is yours. He is your father. But you see, it's one thing for something to be yours and it's another thing for you to have access to it. Salvation gives you access to God. It does not give God access to you. I take that again. I'm nagging this. That's why I said, please, these are fundamentals we need to understand. Salvation gives you access to God. It does not give God access to you. Till today, for the devil to, to do anything in your life, he needs to gain access. He knocks on your door. You open for him, it works. Please, please understand this. Satan cannot usurp upon you. He is not, he, he's not, he's not in a class to do it. Because it's what, it's what God can't himself do by design. God will not come and say, well, whatever is a will he has that is not a predetermined will that must definitely happen, which slows down the moment your own will kicks in. When you become conscious that you are accountable, okay, every most of God's determined will, perfect will, is already almost concluded. But it can kick in again the day you surrender your will and say, Lord, I don't want to be in charge of this life. I'm not talking of salvation, no. I don't want to be in charge of this life anymore. So, Lord, do you know a lot of us, let me show you that flesh is still ruling. Your money belongs to you. Because, man, you work hard. Man, you work hard. God cannot trust you to come to you and say, you know what, go and just empty everything. He can't. Salvation does not give God it doesn't make God trust you. I'm nagging on salvation. No. Because we always feel that once you are saved, 
everything is just uh, salvation does not make god trust you please know that god doesn't trust anybody the only person he trusts is himself <laughs> god, god's favorite house you are looking like god's quiet house this morning <laughs> Salvation <laughs> Salvation does not make God trust you. Your salvation. This doesn't mean that the day you are God saved, the God now says, ah, I trust you. God doesn't trust anybody except himself. So when you see a man, don't forget I said God doesn't trust anybody besides. When you see a man that it seems as though God trusts, no, 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 no. God is not trusting him. The man has just allowed God remove him and occupy space. So the extent to which God trusts him is the extent to which the man has surrendered his will to God. God cannot trust what is not in control of. God cannot trust what is not in control of. God cannot trust what is not in control of. I hope the brother is listening to the sermon. Do he's outside. Don't worry. I'm coming back to him. So when you see some people just ask God, God, this, and God does it, bam. And some other people, oh God, fast, 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 pray, pray, pray. The difference is flesh. God is no respecter of persons. God is no of persons. The difference is what is flesh? Summary. Control. You are in charge. God cannot tell you go and forgive somebody that hurt you, not the one you hurt. I said not in this life. Do you know there are still some people that you can't talk to? Huh? Until now. Five years in the Lord. You know what? I've forgiven him but I don't have anything to do with him. Flesh. Flesh was showed up when God told Moses, go back to Pharaoh. He said, Jesus, excuse me, it seems you didn't know what happened. Your diary is faulty, Lord. Which Pharaoh? The one that is seeking to kill me. What is it that you don't know? God, do you mean you don't know he wants to kill me? He said, I'm sending you back to him. Haven't you noticed, ladies and gentlemen, please, this issue of following. Haven't you noticed that those that followed God, that they have a Bible to read? <laughs> When Abraham was living, there was no Bible law. There was no nothing to. There was no precedence. When Moses, God said, "Go back." There was no well, the law. Mm -mm. Everything you see, Genesis, all the story about Abraham was written by Moses. There was still nothing to read. <laughs> and those people followed God. In Hebrews eleven. You will see their name in the hall, faith hall of fame. But we want to use principle. And yet, scripture, do you know, guess what? There is more responsibility on us than, they, on, than on them. You have precedence. Scripture is in your hands. Let me explain this story. Have you noticed that Angel Gabriel one day came down, sent by God, to visit a clan, a family, two cousins, the family of Zachariah and the family of Joseph. Well, Joseph wasn't a family yet then. They were still cutting. So he went to Zechariah in the temple. Zechariah was an old man. Wife, Elizabeth, old. Says, we will have a child. Zechariah said, eh, how shall these things be? Zechariah was an evil man. <laughs> oh, Lord, how shall these things be? <laughs> then Asia Gabriel too switched. Zaki, you are asking. <laughs> 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 Do you know, the Bible says it's, it's struck him with dumbness. Left Zacchaeus' place. Went on to Maria's place. That was highly favored among all women. Maria, you are going to have a son. Same thing he told Zacchaeus. Say, 
Same question. Mary asked, how shall these things? Mary was a Yoruba woman. <laughs> eh, Angel Gebu, eh, how shall this thing come to pass? I mean, how shall these things be? And the angel said, I will explain to you. Same question, different response. How shall these things be? Be done. <laughs> Shall this this be? I will explain to you. <laughs> you know the difference? The priests at that time they already have the law. Everything Genesis to Leviticus was already in existence. This man had the red being a priest. He was the teacher of the law. Abraham, though, was stricken in age. Hundred years. Zaki wasn't hundred though. God gave child to a man who was past age Sarah being past of age God gave him a child how dare you ask how shall these things be there's a precedence but the other woman Mary how shall these things be it has never happened before that a woman will conceive without the touching of a man that one needs explanation God will hold us more responsible because you have scriptures. If you refuse to follow, you've seen Solo was one person, in, sorry, King Solomon. <laughs> Solo was one person in scripture that I don't want to live his life. But brethren, you can change. Flesh doesn't have to rule you. That will that you are carrying, that is helping you make decisions that at the end of the day you get burnt, surrender it to God. Your making is in the following. Show Allah rather. Go on. Get your destiny. Does he know where he's going? Now, <laughs> no, that is how we move. That's how we live. That is how we live. He doesn't know where it is. Why? He's not the one that positions him. But come. Now, what you are just seeing step out now is a lot of believers. It's called flesh. So, come, come, come back. So, he says, he's now, don't forget he's saved. He now says, Jesus, take over my will. Take over my will means I'll become a robot. <laughs> I can't decide when I eat, when I don't. Oh, yeah. I can't decide. Any car I have, who, who owns the car? <laughs> it's easy for you to say. <laughs> I cannot treat my wife anyhow. Why? She's whose daughter? Do you know I cannot even treat unbelievers anyhow? Because they are created in God's. Whether they worship Satan or not. So I say, so he surrenders his will to me. Say, Jesus, you, you are the one that created me. Where I'm supposed to go, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. You don't need revelation. You don't need 65 steps to know uh, your passion, your pain, blah, blah, blah. You have, a lot of us, our passion has become, our flesh has become the passion. So he says, follow me. So I am Jesus. All right? So he says, follow me. So I take him. Now, please, I'm the only one that knows where Sheun is. Sheun, come back home. <laughs> please call Sheun for me, please. <laughs> call him back from where I positioned him. <laughs> so 
So I take him. And his own job is to... Now, please, can he follow me this way? Can he follow me that way? What does it mean to follow? I must be in the lead. Why you want to make your decision and the word of God is not ahead of you? Question what you're about to do. Excuse me. The Lord is my... I shall not... It makes me to... Lie down. <laughs> please, you don't have to mess up your beauty jacket. It makes... Please stand up. It makes me to... Thank you so much, my brother. Lie down where? Not in deserts. What you think you are looking for? Huh? Even what, what you think you have gotten is not close to what Jesus wants for you. Green pastures. And he does what? Leads me beside. You are swimming in ocean. The wave is carrying you, tossing you to and fro. Still. Then when there seems to be damage. Because even though he's leading you, there must still be some situations that might seem damaging. He's trying to make a man out of a boy. What will he do after then? He will restore your soul. Then he leads me in the path of... Do you know you cannot know how to be holy without the Holy Ghost? Holiness is not... I am not sinning. Sinning has moved from action in the New Testament to your total. <laughs> See, fornication in the New Testament is not... You pull down your trouser. No, 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 no. You are just implementing. The job had been done. <laughs> no, I, I'm here to preach. What you are hearing now, the job had been done in my closet. In the morning, I had prayed. I'm just showing up. In the New Testament, you just show up. Mother now is not taking a knife. First John says, when you hate your brother in your heart, what are you? <laughs> Madra. Grace is awesome, but grace puts more responsibility on. The playing field moves from your actions to your heart. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, I can't control mine. My heart, I can't control it. I've tried. Trust me. Mm. <laughs> I tried a lot. Though. I got frustrated because, you know, like Paul said, some of the things I don't want to do, I end up doing. So there seems to be a conflict in my body. So you know what? Guess what? Jesus, heck, half everything. Since that day, purity came. Even in my thoughts. You cannot handle this thing yourself. He didn't design the New Testament that way. That's why they didn't have the Holy Ghost living in them. You have the Holy Ghost living in you. Day to day walking. Where is he? So I keep leading him. Brethren, he can't miss his way. As long as he's following. Can we stand to pray, please? Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm just, thank you. Don't worry. We are going to get into some deeper, deeper waters in the second service. Please, if you can really wait, I will, I will really love you too. I'm serious. You, it's just one, one Sunday that will change your life. Okay, it's not about anointing or you falling down and getting up. That's not the issue here. The issue is getting the truth and applying it. Christa, God did not design this thing to be a struggle. If it's a struggle, we're not better than the law. It is not designed to be a struggle. It's a flow. In fact, it's not a life you can live. It's a life God lives to himself through you. It's a life God lives for himself through, through you. But flesh, identity that is outside of God. You taking 
responsibility for decisions and it should be God's responsibility because only he knows where the pasture is green only he knows where the water is still you want to really abandon flesh this morning I'm not talking of being saved <laughs> no 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 Because you find yourself ending up doing the things you really hate doing. And you know this is just not the life. Every day. You shouldn't spend your life every day asking God for forgiveness. That's not Christianity. That's not it. No, 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 no. Your life is more fruitful than where you are right now. There's more you can produce than you're producing now. Your yield is still not there. but He wants to, he wants to make you another man. Poke your neighbor and say you can change. But number one, there has to be a desire. God will not exact on anyone. He will never get you to do anything with him under any duress. There must be a desire. Desire, I say, is the door that opens to the corridor of possibilities. Desire is the door that opens to the corridor of possibilities. Please, there's nothing that God created that is absolute. Are you listening? There's nothing God created that is absolute. Nothing. Not one thing. That's why he didn't make us from rock. He made us from mud. He can mar you and remove you again. There's nothing God created that is absolute. If it's absolute, we cannot... There's, you can have seedless watermelon now. Do you know right in your body, even your healing is because your body, you are not absolute that's why you can be healed and that's why you can be sick because there are factors in you that are regulatable we can regulate those factors whenever the word of god goes when you talk about healing as a healing evangelist i know that is not my prayer that does anything but there's this word that goes out that changes water to wine Modern medical lunacy even tells you you can enter a lab as a man physiologically, step out as a woman. Because there's nothing God created that is absolute. There are factors. We can alter it. We can change it. So don't tell me you can't change. Don't tell me, don't tell me that's the way you are. That's not the way you are. This is not the way you've been. Some changes have come in. You can't change. But there must be desire. Your desire must be followed up by a commitment. Every commission has conditions. Every commission has conditions. You cannot live the life of Solomon and expect the result of Elijah. Lift up your hands to heaven. Is it okay to just talk to God the way you want to? This is a converse between just you and himself. There's no human interference. So I can't tell you what to pray. I decided to help you lift up your hands as a mark of surrender. What do you want of what you heard this morning? We are here this morning. We, we prayed for you to come to this beautiful house of God. And you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior yet. My brother, Jesus is just here wanting to love on you. Can you just step out and let me pray with you? You want to give your heart to Jesus. You want to be saved. Come, nobody's going to tell you to raise your hand. Just excuse yourself. Get out. Get, make way off your seat and just come. Come, come, come very quickly. I want to pray with you. There's something that's been going on in your heart even before you came to service. God is telling you this is now the time. Don't let's not live this life anymore. Come, make your way. Come, 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 come. God bless you. I'm waiting for you. I don't have much time. My time is gone. God bless you, my brother. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. It's the word of God. You, you know it. It is time. He brought you. I pray for you that the Lord will bring you. He's brought you. There's been a disturbance in your heart before now. And something has just been telling you, mm, this is the time. This is the time. I pray for you, Ma. I pray for you. Please come, come, come. Come, give that heart to Jesus. Keep coming, keep coming. Just come, surrender it to him.
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, I pray for these ones in front. We receive them into the family of God. Thank you for saving their souls. With the mouth, confession is made to salvation. Can you say with me, Lord Jesus? I thank you for your love. I receive your forgiveness. I receive redemption. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. Please, you may go back to your seats. Please take a card from them. They're going to give you some cards. Are they supposed to go to counselors or the seats? Please, you're meant to go with the counselors. My brother, come, 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 come. Please, let put your hands together for them. They're just new births in our family. Hallelujah. Don't worry, please. Wait for a second service. My time is already way up.